Video, right? Thank you for your patience. Mm. Need nothing like ah, fresh coconut water in the morning. You know? Right? I'm really happy to be back with you guys. You know we haven't been here for a couple of weeks, a few weeks actually. You know due to minor injuries, but um, we're back now. Today we're gonna be talking about why the rabbit. Is the absolute best choice for livestock farming. Mm. Now, in recent times, we've had a large increase in the number of persons who are interested in rearing rabbits and who want to get into it as a business. And most of them, obviously, are attracted by the, uh, let's say, they're interested in making money. Right, based on the retail price that rabbit meat usually goes for. Right? Now, most of them probably never really gave it much thought. But like I said, the rabbit is the absolute best choice for livestock farming. Now the, the, the pig farmers, the sheep farmers, the chicken farmers, everybody, they might disagree. And coming from me, a rabbit farmer, it might sound a bit biased. But there's data to back up that bold statement. So guys, stay tuned. More on this topic right after the intro. <laughs> guys so we're back today we're talking about some of the things that make rabbits the absolute best livestock choice now the first and most obvious one is obviously their size because of their small size you can have a fairly large operation in a small space like for example with our farm here our rabbitry is approximately let's say 60 feet by 40 feet wide and we have loads of space that we haven't even occupied as yet we could probably keep as much as the five or six hundred rabbits in this relatively small space especially if you're looking at doing tear cages that have different levels so you can really maximize the number of rabbits you can keep in a small space now uh, with the exception of maybe poultry all other livestock choices require a lot more space as well as you need to have a certain amount of land per head of livestock for grazing which again requires of course having the land so if you don't have land space for grazing but you have enough space that you can build a decent sized rabbit tree it's quite easy to have a fairly large operation in that small space so that's the first reason why second point and this would be useful to a lot of people is the ability to keep them indoors now if you're minding let's say sheep or even cattle it's impossible to keep them indoors but in the case of rabbits because they don't require that much space I mean if you have a spare bedroom in your house or even if you have a, a garage that you're not using right now or if you have a two-story house you can occupy the space below the house where you can have a fairly large rabbit operation and of course the fact that you're keeping them indoors and they're not exposed to the elements you eliminate a lot of health issues that you usually have with livestock because you have a lot more control over the environment right so that's the second point third point is rapid growth rate rabbits have a very rapid growth rate in most cases rabbits reach sexual maturity as early as four and a half months 
even though in most cases we wait till five, five and a half months before actually breeding them for the first time. But the fact that they have such a fast growth rate is quite possible to recover. If all goes according to plan, of course, it's possible that you can recover all the money that you spent to set up your rabbit tree inside the first year of operation. That is something that you cannot accomplish with most other livestock. <laughs> The fourth point is short generational intervals. Now since rabbits have a short growth time and early sexual maturity, you can automatically benefit from their short generational interval. By that I mean when you breed your first pair of rabbits to the time that their offspring are old enough themselves to be bred. It's relatively short when compared to other types of livestock. So with a proper breeding strategy, you can steadily increase the size of your herd in a relatively short period of time. It would be a lot longer with other types of livestock. Now, this also means that they are the perfect animals for selective breeding and line breeding programs because with that short generational interval you don't have to wait as long to see the results of your work so if you're into selective breeding and line breeding obviously you can create stronger lines in a relatively short period of time now if you haven't seen our video on line breeding should definitely go check that out all right some interesting stuff there i'll leave a link to that in the description below and of course if, if this is your first time with us and you're really interested in, in rabbit farming then go ahead and click that subscribe button okay make sure you hit that little bell as well so you'll get notifications whenever we upload new content all right and while you're at it just click that thumbs up button and give this video a like okay so that's point four okay the fifth point is high reproductive potential when compared to other forms of livestock rabbits have the highest reproductive potential on average a rabbit doe will kindle between one and twelve kits per litter and on rare occasions as many as 16 or 18 kits per litter this this happens from time to time and depending on the breeding schedule used it's possible to have as many as eight litters per year from each door that would never be possible on a forms of livestock cows will have one calf per year sheep will have one to three lamb Goats will have one to three kids. Pigs, on the other hand, they, they tend to have large litters, sometimes as much as 14 piglets per litter. But a pig's gestation period is approximately four months. So you're gonna have probably two litters per year, and pigs have a much longer growth period than rabbits. The average growth for rabbits, if you're into meat production, is 12 weeks 10 to 12 weeks is the average growth time from the time they're kindled to the time they're called to produce meat okay so that's point number five point number six ability to use forages and agricultural byproducts as feed now just as with most other livestock with rabbits, you have the option to use a lot of forages and agricultural byproducts as a food source to cut your production cost because feed is your number one cost in rabbit rearing. However, just as with all other forms of livestock, this is only practical on a small scale. If you're going to feed forages, it's possible to do so but only to a certain point. As long as you're into mass production and fast growth, you're gonna have to supplement that forage with some concentrate feed, which like I said before, is your number one 
course but you do have the option if you're just rearing the rabbits as pets or you're just using them for home use to provide meat for your table then obviously you can keep your costs as low as possible by like feeding forages and agriculture okay, so that's point number six Point number seven, feed conversion ratio. Now, with the exception of poultry, rabbits have the best feed conversion ratio of all other livestock. Now, this is something we discussed previously in our video on reducing the production cost. So if you haven't seen that video as well, I'll link that in the description below. Check that out, feed conversion ratio is something that you need to understand once you're in animal production right whether it be rabbits or any other type of livestock okay guys so it just started raining here so i hope you can still hear me clearly i'll just try to speak a bit louder so briefly the feed conversion ratio is the amount of kilograms of feed that the animal has to consume to gain one kilogram of body weight so the smaller the feed conversion number the better for cattle right i did some research online because i'm not a cattle farmer right i just rear rabbits but i did some research online and most of the, the research information i looked at they said that the average feed conversion ratio for cattle is six which means that a cow has to eat six kilograms of feed to gain one kilogram of body weight. For pigs, the average is about 3.5, 3.5 kilograms of feed that they have to eat to gain one kilogram of body weight. For sheep, it's about 4.5. Right, so you see these forms are like suck up a relatively high feed conversion ratio. For rabbits, the average feed conversion ratio is about 3, 2.5 to 3, right, based on all the research that I've looked at. So, you see here where rabbits have the ability to more efficiently convert feed into body weight, which is why they are, again, the best livestock choice if you're going to get into livestock farming because you have the ability for a faster turnover and regaining that capital that you would have put up. That's point number seven. Okay guys, point number eight and last but not least, rabbit manual. Okay, rabbits are the only livestock animal whose manure doesn't need to be composted before it can be used in your garden. It can be applied directly to your garden and it won't burn your plants. Rabbit manure is what we refer to as a cold manure. And it's very high in nitrogen and phosphorus which your plants will love. You give it a try. You put some rabbit manure around the plants in your garden and inside of two days, you're gonna see a definite change in the, the intensity of green in the leaves of that plant. Plants, they love rabbit manure and that's what we use for our home garden, for all of the root, well, all, well, basically all of the crops that we grow outside of our aquaponic system, like corn and things like that, that we grow for home use. It's only rabbit manure that we use. We don't use any other fertilizers. Pure rabbit manure and we get some really nice airs on those corn. Rabbit manure breaks down quickly, so adding rabbit manure to your soil will very rapidly improve soil quality, which will obviously improve the growth of your plants. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found the information useful. Be happy to see you guys here again and be back with you guys. I'm going to be on schedule again for a new rabbit farming video every Monday and a new aquaponics video every Wednesday. So look out this coming Wednesday for a new aquaponics video. And of course next Monday 
found your rabbit farm in video. Again, if it's your first time with us, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure and hit the little bell so that you'll get notifications whenever we upload new content. This is your boy Sean Austin on behalf of myself and my business partner Sean McLean. Thank you guys for being here with us today and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. By the way, let me know what you guys think about this nice Californian doe. This is one of the young does that I selected to keep as a future breeder. So you guys let me know what you think. Okay? Join us still. Join us rabbit. Join us for the you signing off. Peace.